Hi, my name is Nat, amateur radio call sign W8NAT, and today I want to show you some software that I'm using called the Win4 ICOM Suite uh, from VA2FSQ. It's a desktop uh, remote software for your ICOM 7300 or 7610. I have a 7300. And it's a uh, alternative to ICOM's remote control software called RSBA1. Um, the win for ICOM suite is 60 bucks. It uh, has a 30-day trial if you want to check it out. Whereas the ICOM software is around 150, so it's definitely a steal for me. Um, you can see that it has controls for just about everything on the front of the radio, and then some, as well as an attempt. Uh, down below to recreate the waterfall display. Now the 7300 does not have an IQ out so instead of a real waterfall display this is taking data coming over the serial port and recreating the waterfall display. Uh, there is something to make this look a lot nicer and it's why I bought the software uh, so I'll get into that in a second but first I'm going to show you a really cool feature here if you're controlling your radio with software like this, you're, uh, you're tying up the rig control on the radio. As you see, I connect to the radio on COM13 at uh, 115.200. Uh, but this comes with six uh, what he calls virtual radios for your other applications to connect to. Um, now, there's a trick to this. You do have to install something called COM0COM. This is in the manual. It tells you how to do this. And in COM0COM, you set up virtual pairs of COM ports. And these COM ports act as though uh, there are two COM ports connected to each other with a null modem cable. And what that does is it makes it so that when you make a pair, like here's 9 and 10 I put together, and uh, here I put 7 and 8 together, and 11 and 12 together. Uh, the other two at the bottom are experiments, I'm not using those. But uh, when you have a pair, you can connect one software to one member of the pair, like COM9, and the other software to the other member, COM10, and the pieces of software can talk to each other. So if we, uh, let me get this uh, closed out here. If we go back to the win for icom software, you'll see I have my first virtual radio set up on COM9 at 38.4 kilobaud, and I've called it logging. And I've called it logging because I'm using that with my logging software, which is loading up here. It's N3FJP's amateur contact log software I really like and in here I have to drag this in so you can see it there we go I have the software talking on COM10 at 38.4 kilobaud and you can see it's pulling the radio just fine and as far as it knows it's talking directly to the radio it knows nothing about the fact that it's talking to one of these virtual radios so the advantage of this is that both programs can use rig control at the same time. As I turn the knob and the frequency changes on win for icom if you look down at my logging software, it's changed down there as well. And then it comes back up. It lags a little behind because the logging software populates that field a little slower. But it changes it in both places. It also comes in handy if you decide you're going to make a change from one piece of software. If you look down in the logging software, it picks it up too. And same thing going back. Now this can, like I said, be really handy, but the main thing is it lets you run multiple things that need to talk to the radio at the same time. So let me get out of my logging software. Um, but uh, I also use this so I can leave this up at the same time as I'm using digital modes. Uh, over here in the radio is my second virtual radio. I've called it Digi Modes on COM8. And that's paired with COM7. 
and I have FL Digi, WSJTX, and JSA Call all set to use COM7. I would never run any of those three at the same time because they would fight over the sound card. So I really only need one setting for these digital mode programs. But I can have FL Digi open at the same time as my amateur uh, call log at the same time as this whole win for ICOM suite. And everything talks to the radio as if they each have their own connection to the radio. It's great. Now, on to this display. Because it has to fake the waterfall, uh, it looks kind of bad. <laughs> but check this out. This is the latest feature, or new to me, and SDR play connected to an RX antenna. I have an, X an SDR play. Uh, but see, you can also choose IQ if you have a 7610 and none, which is what I used to use. Well, if you have an SDR play and a splitter box, uh, like the MFJ 1708B, which I have, that will basically let you share your antenna between your SDR play and your radio and disconnect the SDR play when you're transmitting, uh, you can do this setup. Now, you could also send the SDR play to any uh, SDR software. I found rig control with those sometimes gets to be a bit of a nightmare. So the idea that it could be built right in here is great. And sure enough, you go here, you can pick the IQ spectrum window that you would normally use with the 7610. And here it comes. That is a beautiful, smooth scrolling. Check, check out the difference here. <laughs> the resolution is much nicer. The sample rate is much nicer. It's just a much nicer looking waterfall. So if you have an SDR play, uh, it doesn't say it supports any other SDRs, but if you have an SDR play and a switch like that, uh, that's really handy. As you can see, you can double click on the waterfall to play, display to change the frequency, which you probably knew. But you could do this from either window. So that means don't need this one anymore. So, bye. I'm using the nice smooth scrolling one. Um, this was the feature that uh, finally pushed me over the edge to actually purchase the software for, uh, like I said, it's $60. Um, you can drag this around. I'm just sort of playing with the display because I like it. Right now we're looking at the entire 40 meter band. Uh, it's very nice. Um, I could play around just with this, especially in sideband, quite a bit. Uh, by the way, he also makes a uh, win for Elecraft suite and a win for Yezu suite. Uh, and they're all, last I checked, 60 bucks, and they all do similar things. Um, if your radio does have an IF out, it can feed this kind of waterfall display, but having room for the alternate was nice. Now I'm just going to the 20 meter band. Uh, this can um, be a little clumsier for me. I think the signals seem narrower. I think it's because the band is a different size, but there's somebody faintly calling CQ. And he's being drowned out by somebody just off frequency from him. How nice. Anyway, uh, you can have a lot of fun playing with the waterfall. Um, 40 meters seems a little unpopulated this evening or I mean 20 meter does compared to 40 which is just just going nuts today anyway uh but yeah I've been really imp there's a strong signal <laughs> so now I'm just playing around and making you watch me um so yeah I'm quite enjoying this software uh, up in the control head up here, you can, like if I go back to 40, it remembers where I was, just like on the radio itself. But there's controls here for anything the radio can do, including a couple things this model can't do, like PSK. Um, I was happy to actually find controls for the dual bandpass filter ICOM's famous for. I prefer the knobs on the front of the radio for this, but it's still kind of cool that it's there. In fact, I'm going to use the radio to reset that. There we go. Um, but yeah, pretty much anything you can have the radio do, 
you can use this to make the radio do. Uh, pretty cool product, I think. Anyway, that's it. I'm not plugging it. I'm not getting paid. I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, so that's it for now. So until next time, 73 everyone. And remember, if you like and subscribe, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how any of this works. <laughs>